permission to use Sony jokes during this video. Yes, There's... you may. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Bray. you may do. All right. Bray. I was a Sony joke once. Thirty-two Xboxes. <laughs> oh boy. After all, after all, you are the head of uh, Sony Pictures Animation, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was a Sony joke once! Dennis doesn't know who his real father is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I went there. <laughs> I didn't get it. I'll explain later. Oh, actually, I will. Okay. Dennis is pretty much the. Su is Dracula's grandson. Oh, hotel. it's a hotel. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! There you go! <laughs> oh! Oh! Could you said Hotel Transylvania and he would have got it. <laughs> and then Dennis mated with a werewolf lady and they gave birth to a mummy. The end! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's a hater. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised anything can happen now in Sony Band. <laughs> hey, John Cena, ever heard of Surf's Up? Then you're in it! <laughs> there would have been a worse joke, but considering previous events, I'm thankful I didn't go that route. So, oh, wow. I put it this way it was either that or Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> In, yeah. Yeah. In ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, a two, a one. Hello, welcome to the Cinema Lounge where we discuss movie topics in the current events of fashion. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape. Too loud. Way Is too that loud. actually? <laughs> that was my mother. <laughs> That's a <Mom>. woman. <laughs> it, it 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 didn't sound like it on my end. Yeah, I, it, it, it like didn't. It sounds like you had well, a brother or something. Well, that's her voice when she's half asleep. Oh, that sounds like my mom. And if you she's know, it's, it's... Mike, Mike, if she's awake, does she sound like Judy Garland? Yes, uh, actually she sounds a little bit more like Gene Hagen. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> What am I done with something? Uh, <laughs> one cup of coffee, that's all it takes. We miss the Golden Girls. If they can revive Full House, it's to revive of the Golden Girls. <laughs> like in the what gold... the Diamond Girls and like they're all in wheelchairs? You're only gonna see We'll call it the You're Diamond only gonna Dogs, see maybe. Welcome to Simmeroy. Fuck. 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 Welcome to the Simmeroy. Fuck. I don't you want to fuck Roy. Here is Roy. Who wants to stick it in first? We'll go to the orgy. Tonight on After Hours, the ultimate nerd of orgies. <laughs> he slimed me. <laughs> oh, I feel so funky! <sighs> now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go make another Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. You guys are the best. Danger! Danger! Danger Robinson! <laughs> Dr. Smith is a child molester! Danger! Danger! Uh, Leave it to Robot Chicken. <laughs> okay, 
time. Over time. Okay. Hello, this is Cinema Lounge, where we talk about movie topics in the current events fashion. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and we got some interesting breaking news here for us tonight. Uh, let me introduce to you two of the Brotherhoods of Cinema, if you don't know already. First up, we got James Sullivan, also known as Hamitude. Okay, uh, cinematic fashions? Because what we're looking at, not quite so fashionable. <laughs> You're kidding, we're fashionistas. What did he say, Uncle Deadly? <laughs> and, the, and the boy, and the man in the middle of this map prevails and knows Anna Matt. Hello, everybody! Here's an interesting fact you might not know about me. I am banned from Hotel Transylvania because Des Dennis doesn't know his real father. <laughs> then who the fuck is his mother? Oh no, it's still Mavis. Oh, oh. not Don't a bad choice. <laughs> and of course, this wouldn't happen without him, Morgan Ledger. Hey gang. As you can tell, I've seen the greatest movie of all time. I'll give you a clue. It's Star... Oh! Zoolander 2! <laughs> yeah! You actually saw the witch? You know the funny thing is, earlier in the week when I was searching showing times for Zootopia, ooh, see what I did there? When I was searching for showing times for Zootopia, um, I saw Zoolander there, but no show times. It was a sign. <laughs> and by the time I saw the show times for today at the cinema, Zoolander disappeared. <laughs> oh wow! It was it was amazing. <laughs> it's like, oh, how wow. long has this movie been in in in, in cinemas for? Yeah, just just about as long as the first one was. <laughs> okay, so breaking stuff going on here. Yesterday, or Thursday rather, uh, the Ghostbusters trailer popped up out of nowhere for people to view, and uh, people are split on it. Very split. Um, if you look on the trailer for Sony uh, Entertainment. I just realized yes. something. You should have gone to go see Zoolander. There is no Zoolander. There's only Ben Stiller. There is only Zootopia. Damn straight. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah. The, uh, uh, just, do you want me to do a quick version, Mike, on this? Yes, you may. All right. Do a quick version. Okay, <laughs> because that, that, it might take a while. Okay, okay. basically, the thing is, is that um, not too long ago, as we are recording this, the trailer for Go for the reboot of Ghostbusters has been released. Um, it was mostly negative, per se. When you go to Sony Pictures Entertainment's uh, YouTube channel, you will notice how only 30... It's, it's only gotten 33% of likes, and the rest is just a giant bar of dislikes, and... Um, yeah, you will see that the comments there, oh boy, regardless of the view on the trailer, um, it's far more entertaining. <laughs> the things I... they say there is just... Oodlally. Oodlally. I think my favorite was Angry Joe, because he was the only one watching the trailer. His other Joe couldn't be there because he had a wedding or something. He was like, no, no, what are they doing to this? Oh, this is not what Ghostbusters stands for. <laughs> Did you see his reaction? It's almost like someone coming out of a hangover and having a really bitter coffee. It's like, God, you, you said this was French roast. <laughs> I woke up next to that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so... That's how Dennis was made. <laughs> What's the new running gag now? <laughs> And his um, mother was so Debbie. Hey, the punch line. Hey, the punch, the punch line is that I slept with Mavis. I don't see what's wrong with that. And the punchline is I slept with a fluffy cow. 
<laughs> oh, combine all the, f the running gigs together into one mixing bowl. Guys, you don't want to know what I've been sleeping with. Rocket? We knew that. No. Even worse. It was a three way! Oh, Rocket and Nimit Otter. Seal! It's a seal! <laughs> it's a seal, you fool! I couldn't care less! <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so I decided to make this like exclusive uh, mini episode all about Ghostbusters, and we discussed it about the trailer and how it doesn't look that good, or what we think about the trailer and all that stuff, because we have a lot to say about it, especially Morgan. So that's especially, why we're here tonight. Especially, especially the man wearing a Ghostbusters suit and fox ears. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And has especially. A fly Damn it, my ear is drooping. I think there was a show for that. It was called Foxbusters. <laughs> True story, you can look it up. I believe you. Here we go. Okay, so... Alright, so... Thoughts on the trailer alone. So, who can... <laughs> okay, who I will start... Oh. Yeah. I, I'm gonna start here because I actually have something written up because someone else happened to Skype me earlier ask me my opinion on this it's rounding out uh, it's running out to be a joke not a funny one uh, the trailer it's like drinking a soda you haven't tasted in years without the fizz a very familiar flavor but you can't place your finger on it because you don't know it anymore I'm not explosively angry about it or anything life's too short for that but it's like have you ever, have you guys ever had a childhood or teenhood friend that you felt really, really close to years ago? You were upset that they had to go, then one day they cross your mind, you hunt them down on Facebook, just to see what they're up to, even if you've moved on, and you look at them and they've become somebody you'd never want to associate yourself with. The Ghostbusters trailer is that kind of disappointing. You watch it once, it comes up in conversation with your friends, you say what's disappointing about it, and then move on. Yeah. If I may put my take on it, uh, if I could take my turn, I'm going to start things out by saying that out of all the people here, I'm probably... I'm not really that personally attached to Ghostbusters. No, I'm, I'm not saying I don't like Ghostbusters. You know, it's a good movie. It's just, like, I haven't seen it in years, so, like, it's just... I don't know, it's kind of a blank on me. So, like, looking at this trailer, all, all I could say is just, eh. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is that everything about it kind of tells me, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's your basic summer blockbuster, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a good one because the actors are not really that funny to begin with. So, in many ways, and I, and I just realized this, that I don't know if, the, if this sounds controversial to say, but... This looks like, you know, this looks like this year's Pixels. Basically, you got a whole bunch of special effects and unfunny people. I don't know if I would go that far, I, but... I wouldn't go that far. I'd say it's probably this year's, um... I'd probably say it's this year's... I'm stuck between either using Heaven's Gate as an example... Or Josh Trank superhero movie that will not be named because if I mention the title, I will get sued by a four-digit grand find. Hmm. Ah, see what I did there? Four digits. Ugh. What's Digit doing here? Isn't he? Is he in another dimension? But okay, no. But like, basically, He's that's kind of the idea that I. That's kind of the idea that I was thinking of, and I see many of the dumb tropes that I would expect, like. You mostly got, it, it looks like it's going to be very heavy, it looks like it's going to be CG heavy, of course it's set in New York City, and like, even already I could tell that Sony is already putting product placements, there was a giant sign of freaking Blu-ray in there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the billboards were kind of yeah. interesting. To look like at. A, lot of the... a, a staple for every movie Sony and Columbia makes. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah, they love to advertise. But, um, yeah, other than that, it's just, like, I, I don't know. Even the, the, the special effects, yeah, they look pretty cheap. Like, even, like, even Pixels actually looks better. <laughs> but, um, honestly, That's other than amazing. that, it looks like a dumb... It's a, it's basically a ghost-themed summer blockbuster that all I can think of is just a... Just, eh. I'm, I'm not even yeah. gonna bother just watching it. I don't, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I knew we knew that they were gonna. Yeah, we knew it. This is coming. We knew we. It was announced. It was coming. They, uh, we saw it coming, but then we had to wait for the trailer to come out, and boom, here we are. Well, I was gonna say we we knew this was gonna suck, but um. Well, let me let me backtrack a little here. I saw Bridesmaids very recently on Valentine's Day, and Paul Feig directed that one. Some of the cast members mm -hmm. from that movie are in this one. And mm -hmm. when I was watching that movie, what I saw was a chick flick trying to be a raunchy comedy, and it didn't work because I was looking at the tropes of a romance chick flick and recognizing these tropes. And the only time that film worked was when it was being a romantic chick flick trope when you had Chris Wiggs' character romancing that um, cop or whatever, because at least that sort of did work. And there were at least a couple moments where Melissa McCarthy was actually kind of funny, mentioning the Fight Club wedding, which was kind of humorous. But most of the time, I was just watching these women trying to make things that wouldn't be funny and make it even more unfunny with constant ad-libbing. I swear to God, there's a scene that goes on for ever where they're on a plane and going to Vegas and Kristen Wiig's character has the shaft of all because she couldn't afford a seat in first class and she ends up getting souped up on drugs and alcohol and she starts acting all loopy and stuff and it goes on and on and on and watching the trailer that's what the feeling I got I just saw these people who were just spitballing stuff around and trying to make it funny and it just didn't work um at least from what I'm feeling I know it's like, don't judge a book by its cover too early, but your highlight is ectoplasm being vomited onto someone, which is in every single Paul Feig movie. Seriously, name me a Paul Feig movie where there is not a vomit gag. I dare you. <sighs> I just realized something, too. Bridesmaids was nominated for an Oscar, but with this movie, it's going to be nominated for a Razzie. I'm calling it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, when I was looking at the ghosts, I didn't think they were f threatening at the least, but all I just saw them was being very video gamey. It felt like as if they were looking at the designs of Disney's The Haunted Mansion and says, that looks cool, that looks intriguing, let's take that and make those the ghosts. They were like skeletons. If you look at the ghosts in Ghostbusters, they were more than just puppets. You saw like decaying flesh and stuff, and when mm -hmm. they weren't decaying flesh, they at least looked interesting. Here, they're very Beetlejuice-esque and it just doesn't work. Like, look at the ghost effects in The Frighteners and Return of the King. They were like actual ghosts. Hell, when you have a lowbrow comedy, that being Anchorman 2, which has a far better ghost effect, with, with, Jay, with John C. Riley as the ghost of Stonewall Jackson being a far better ghost effect than the ghost effects in this trailer, that is not a good sign. Yeah, because because at least with John C. Riley, they had him on the set. They had the green screen there, so they could add lit and do things with him. Um, I'm just looking at digital effects. Oh, the Slimer you saw in the trailer was really a puppet. We just CGI'd all over him. Look, it worked in Jurassic World, but the problem is that I'm looking at the Slimer in this one for the few frames he's in. He looks way too CGI. It looks like something out of a video game. There's too much fluid ectoplasm all over him. He looks too greased up. It doesn't work. It just oh my goodness. This, this Slimer! This Slimer is more Slimer than the Slimer I saw in the trailer! Morgan? Actually, um... You say it first, I'll say mine. Okay, I'll say it. Okay. The thing is, is that, like, the one thing, I, yeah, I was actually looking at it, um, like, you, you kind of got something right with the ghosts, is that, like, 
the one in the beginning, I was I felt rather confused about what it's supposed to be because it feels like there are too many things going on. At least with the Haunted Mansion goes, they that like they look rather simple. You can see what they are, but like that one, I have no clue what it is from the neck down. Is like is that a, is that a woman and a, or is that a man or like, I have no freaking clue. And then the, suddenly the, the, li the, the library face... one, the library one was a woman. They were recreating that library yeah. scene from the first movie. Yeah, I was. Oh, just they were trying say... to do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know what it That's... is. It just seems complicated, and I can assure you, like, I can imagine even the haunted mansion goes are just gonna look at this like. Ah. Well, I'm, you just know, I'm, just, just, I'm just imagining the hitchhikers going, screw this, we're going to a different movie. No, <laughs> no, I, no, 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 I imagine, no, what happens? They're moving to Canada, because, for God's sakes, if the Hall of Presidents gets freaking Trump. No, no, they become the Hall of Presidents. That's what's oh. more interesting. Okay, let me say a couple of things about this. Um, just so you know, it's, it's set in New York, but it's filmed in Boston, which was kind of close to Morgan. I have a funny story behind that, but go on. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, so there was an event that happened where they brought in exclusive Ghostbuster fans to premiere the trailer in front of them. And I heard about this from a couple of YouTubers. Uh, Andre the Black Nerd was one of them. He the, His video on the Ghostbuster trailer is actually really good. If you want to check that out, just please check that out. Um, so what he's said that there was a Q&A afterwards of the trailer of which the Ghostbuster fans who attended that screening enjoyed it and said one more time one more time so they enjoyed the trailer so whoever they invited for Ghostbusters fans and then some of them were from charters you know the Ghostbuster charter charters that they do so so there was people who loved it um, they bribed them the with Twinkies they gotta bribe them with Twinkies I, I just know it that's probably what happened here, it's gonna suck. Here, have a no, Twinkie. Of course here, they're, here. No, of course they bribed them with something. They must have gotten some kind of, like, Ghostbusters memorabilia or merch from it. Mm, or I don't they, know, it or just... They, or they erased their minds and played the first Ghostbusters, but that's probably what happened. I don't know, but uh, the Q&A they had afterwards, one of them was about that librarian ghost at the beginning of the trailer, and they said that it was a real person dressed in an LED suit, and they just put CGI over her to make it more ghostly. Why would you... No! no. I still didn't so... understand what that is. So it was it was just a real person in a suit, you know, being in the air, interacting with them, but they just covered her with CGI to make it more ghostly. And the reason why they did that, because they said they didn't want them to interact with a tennis ball. That's the fun part, because you're imagining something is there. That was that was the one of the things they talked about. Um, Come on. Actually, yeah. a te actually, a tennis ball would be much more scarier than those ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should have got that tennis ball and just put the ghost effects on that. No, 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 no. Instead of proton packs, they're tennis rackets with little uh, wi uh, lightsaber wires and stuff instead of, yeah. like, all the nets. Get in the trap! Get in the trap! <laughs> it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little tennis ball from the Witches of Eastwick that's bouncing around. Oh my god, Morgan. I just realized it's an all-women's cast, so you'll hear a lot of screams like, ah! 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 Which brings me to one criticism I have. I'm looking at these characters, and I don't see them as Ghostbusters. Um... And it's because I know these people can do comedy, but the problem with the first one is that they sort of acted like everyday people. And I'm not, you know, saying, oh, you're just saying it because you're sexist or anything. Look, I've seen 9 to 5. That's a funny movie. Uh, which is of Eastwick, even though James disagrees with me on this one. That's a good one as well, looking into sexism and feminism. Um, I'm looking at these characters. I'm not seeing them as potential Ghostbusters. I think they're way too cartoony. And not really gelling that much. Even though they're just spitballing stuff, nothing's gelling. I think we're talking about a missed opportunity here for Jane Lynch to be a Ghostbuster, and that would have been perfect casting. I think Paul Feig just played it way too safe and said, you know what, I got girls of my own, they've worked with me before. No. Auditioning. Searching. Uh, you... There's more potential in finding 
other people that could suit this role. I am not against female Ghostbusters. I am oh, yeah. not. But there's certain aspects of chemistry that have to work. And when I see these people, they're like the annoying group you find at a buffet that, you know, where they're in the back going, oh, that's kind of funny. Oh, no, 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 just tossing things around. Uh, talking about this trailer is making me go into my primal urge now. Um, mm hmm. By by the way, when we when, 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 speaking of one of the ghosts, did anyone notice that still ghost with the pins? Yeah, that is. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. Uncle Sam? I, I have no idea. Well, was, the one well, America I officially notice, dead however, now. Was the sign for blue, for a Blu-ray behind him. Well, okay, you know that time where uh, that Times Square scene where all the ghosts are. Yeah. If you look at that scene a little closer, you know when they come out, the billboards change. Into the old timey advertisements, so they so. Ch so it's like Papa John's and then Sony, and then all of a sudden it changes to like a tavern, and it's like so something happens where the ghosts are changing the the, the square into the, the the old time square. I don't know. I just thought that was a weird, weird little wow. detail. Yeah. Well, it's something that has to do with the plot. So they already revealed the plot in the movie. Why bother go seeing it? They, they band together, they're losers from the university, they decide, oh, hey, let's get them back, make a ghost fighting system, they get the tools, a bunch of ghosts are unleashed because of some demonic thing is trying to take over New York City, and it somehow messes with their system. That's all you need to know, because that's what the first Ghostbusters is. And at least they had some interesting attributes here. They had Rick Moranis being the nerdy um, uh, apartment, Dweller, they had Sigoni Weaver playing off of Bill Murray. Here, it's just like they're taking the ABC formula of the first movie. At least, that's the sense I'm getting at. Oh, no, 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 we got this nice, hunky guy that's, that's supposed to be the villain of the whole thing named Ro Wang, and it's like, no, I'm done. Yeah, we... Th this film has under undergone a lot of scrutiny before, before the trailer was even... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, from the get even started. Yeah. And, and, and when we, when we, um, uh, like Morgan said, we, uh, we already, uh, there was that whole deal about having an all female Ghostbusters team and whatnot. And, and suddenly there was some, there was some controversy. Uh, when has this become a boys' club? Uh, and then, I I I just I I'd, I'd been patting this out, wanting to uh, wanting to give it a shot, and you know Paul Feig saying that he wanted to make it scarier than the original films, which is not the point of a Ghostbusters film. I don't see the scary. And you got the first image that was leaked of the main cast, which looked. Which didn't look like Ghostbusters, it looked like a spoof of the Ghostbusters. Something, I don't know, maybe uh, it should be a Saturday Night Live sketch. They already have one actress. Um, and the toy that was released that was very revealing. Oh god, that, to that oh, stupid yeah. toy reveal, that's... I don't know how that's gonna play out, I don't know if that's... Cause I don't believe that shit. I don't believe that's gonna be like the actual look of the the villain in the movie. Oh no! Like, if, if, if... I, I I don't know. We got the Stay of Marshmallow Man for the first movie, and that worked for a reason. Yeah. I, I know, but it worked just... for a reason because it was a side character. This looks like it could have been. A... It looks like this could have been. Uh, this movie's Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Well, but nothing no. missing is a sailor suit. But no. They had to make it a main villain. Yeah. Uh, the the other day I was. It looks like an my... angry sperm. <laughs> um, I just want to point out. Um, the other day I went to my local video store, Movie Stop, because I need to watch out the badness of the trailer. Um, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine was there, and he actually said he was in Boston when they were filming it, and he was like behind the scenes and everything, and I, you know, told him what it was like, and he was like. Well, 
I don't know, but if he said the madness of the trailer was true, I'll tell you this much. They had to kill an actual horse for this kind of thing, and there were some problems behind the set, and that's when I immediately realized, oh, this is not going to end well. Oh, wow. And I, don't if, and I don't know if he meant that literally or figuratively, but either way, it doesn't sound good. Nah. <laughs> But yeah, there okay. is one thing that it does make me wonder about Ghostbusters. So at this point, yeah, like it's been getting so much negative reactions. Maybe not as much as like Gem and the Holograms, but like it's been going pretty bad. But the question still remains. Okay, so m there's a very good chance that it's going to suck. But is it going to be a flop? That I that I highly doubt because like you're you're going to get a lot. Sure, there's a lot of angry fanboys right now. But, but is it really going to? St are they really going to boycott this movie? I I'd be surprised if it becomes this year's Terminator Genesis. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't that be could be. Yeah. That could be. I can I can see that actually. Because, because the problems with Terminator Five was that they showed too much of the movie. They didn't keep anything secretive. They just literally flat out went, um, nothing or broke, and said, "We have a movie. Go see it." They had James Cameron's back, which made things too curious. And then we had the Twitter effect with this movie where people were seeing it on opening day and we had that mixed reaction where everyone was like, don't go see it, don't go see it. Regardless, just because it's a property franchise doesn't mean it is not or is doomed to fail. There are some projects that have done reasonably well but have this backlash of screw. No, okay, you did bring up a good point with, uh, Terminator, Gen with uh, Terminator Genesis. <laughs> I was I was thinking like there there is a good po I was thinking more there is a good possibility but now like I could see now that it is a feasible option that it could mm -hmm. probably flop but at this rate like with what they're doing with Ghostbusters and stuff like that it's just like I feel like it's more another example that just Sony is just kind of desperate for franchises like they they're just rebooting the franchise because they need a franchise right now and like. Do not you cannot deny that Sony is not desperate for franchises. Just this week they announced a freaking surf's up too with freaking wrestlers. Ah <sighs> Let me alright, let me bring up something. That was another thing that was revealed and um uh Andre brought this up in his in his video, but at Sony oh, oh, Pictures oh gee, oh gee Mike, does this involve Dan Aykroyd? Th I'll, I'll bring that up too. Um Oh yeah, um, I know what you mean actually. I, yeah, I know. I I shared that. Um but he, but Sony Pictures uh has a division called Ghost Corp and they're doing that to f make Ghostbusters films. So, not only are we going to have Ghostbusters, we're going to have another one with all the males like we wanted, you know, with the Russo brothers directing and Drew Pierce writing in that one it's going to be called Ghost Corp, I think. And then we're going to have the animated Ghostbusters film by Sony Pictures Animation that was announced. So, it's not dead. It's still going. So, this film, either, whether it flops or not, they're still going to do the other two films, possibly. It's a franchise I they're willing to I, make. I, I, yeah, I, I do as well. Um, I read up when they were going to reboot Yellow Submarine, they're going to have this Cirque du Soleil performance at the Beatles tunes. And because of the bombing of Mars Needs Moms, and because Yellow, the Yellow Submarine remake didn't happen for that reason, all those plans of having like this big Beatles revival didn't occur just because of that one small temple that literally made a domino effect for things. Um, a series of unfortunate events, we have not seen the sequel of that. They're trying to resurrect that as a Netflix series. There are certain aspects where they're just going to test the waters, see if it's going to fly, and if it's not going to fly, they're going to literally find other pigeonholes and other places to do a new thing. Really, really think about that. The internet has a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I just like, realized... They say, they we, say we, a we, lot we of things. the comic books. Yeah, like, they mm -hmm. say a lot of things, but you never know if it's actually going to happen. I mean, a great example, That's... like, considering we are talking about Sony, is Popeye. We're talking about Sony or Canon Films. <laughs> no, okay, anyway. Anyways, like, a, a good example, another good example is actually Sony's Popeye. Like, it, it went pretty viral when Jenny Tartakovsky released his animation test, but it turns out that the executives of Sony, they did not like it at all. 
they decided to can it and they kicked, they booted out Jenny Tartakovsky on the project. And for the longest time, people were expecting like it's in development hell. The only thing that we know so far is that uh, they did bring back, they did brought in the writer of the Ratchet and Clank games to write the movie, but it doesn't necessarily mean that like it, we know if there's a release date or something like that. We don't even know if it's actually going to happen. So for now, it's just all speculations and ideas. And that's what Sony is basically, that's what Sony basically is. It's nothing but like speculations and ideas, and sometimes they want to jump the gun too much. When is Sony, when is Sony ever not doing something? Well, I know. For, well, actually, I know for a fact that they're also doing that. Like, they're also doing the same thing with freaking Spider-Man. Like, they just announced. Yeah, Venom. Like, okay. Yeah, they just announced Venom, and they're also going to do that. Like, they're also doing that animated Spider-Man thing. Which still like, happening. Yeah, like, the, like they want to do that for the end of 2018, but they're not even sure if like the reboot that they have now would even work in the first place. All right. Okay, I see what you guys mean. Okay, that's a, like, anything could happen at this point, so it's not like it. Yeah, and Spider-Man is slowly migrating over to to Marvel. Yeah, Marvel. back to Disney. It looks promising. All right. So, Dan Aykroyd tweeted about the trailer. He said, "I told you, GB3 was good. Trailer just the beginning of a fun-filled summer with my paranormal sisterhood." He praised it. He's in support of it. Okay. <laughs> hey. He's gonna make a cameo in the film too, he's, as well. So. He's yeah. The of the franchise, so why not? What can I say? Who are you gonna call? Someone else. Someone else. <laughs> yep. Nice. His paycheck is right off. The exactly. Twitter feed. I mean, the dude is in the pro. The dude is in the project. He got paid by Sony, and I'm sure, like. They're paying he's, him he's to say it. something good because, like, it's his baby. The, I heard. Yeah, his, I heard a supposed element as to how he's going to be in here, but I'm not going to ruin it for you guys. Please do. Reasons. I don't care. Wait, I'm not well, going to watch we, it. We 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 got people watching. Oh, do yeah. you think they're going like, to care? <laughs> all right. Supposedly, from what I heard on the Air Movie database, is that Dan Aykroyd is going to be Ray as a taxi driver. And he's the one that helps them to get the equipment and everything else and to revive the whole Ghostbusters system. To which I think is a bit of a fake theory considering how the trailer clearly states they are building their equipment and it's trying to be a new movie. But mm -hmm. then on the other hand it says 30 years ago there used to be these people so now it's really starting to speculate here as to what in the world they're going to do. Is this a so, remake yeah. or a reboot? It sounds like they want to do that, Hey, you're that guy. You're that. You're the Ghostbuster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we used to have a 22 jump... We used to have a 21 Jump Street system back in the 80s. Oh, that was because Johnny Depp got shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but but yeah, that was... That was Depp's idea. Nice. That, that trailer just throws you off at the beginning because it's like 30 years ago four scientists which was three actually three scientists saved New York because uh, Winston wasn't a scientist per se no um, he just did it, he just did it for the paycheck yeah that's what everyone so, involved with this project said but I love this town it was just weird how they ever at the beginning of it because it's like is it a, a, a requel is it a, a reboot sequel or is it just a reboot it's just it, the trailer i think it was bad i think the trailer was marketed and edited and f showing the wrong footage like they should have and usually when trailers they usually have three of them so there's two other trailers that are going to come out and they probably might be a little bit better than this trailer i don't know mm -hmm. batman versus superman the damage has been done it's they, true they but the really final liked... trailer for it was amazing I don't know. When when I saw the final trailer, I was like, "Yeah, it looks nice, but some of the stuff looks a little too gamey." And at this point, I want to stick two Q-tips straight into my earlobes so I don't listen to Lex Luthor fanboying about the whole thing. That's the oh one. yeah. That, that's that's the one thing I have against that movie so far. It's what they got for Lex Luthor. He's way too fanboy. 
fish. Uh, Gene Hackman is the Lex Luthor. He's like a con car salesman with a brain. And that's what I love about Lex Luthor so much. It's like, you think he can trump him, but no, he always has a plan B up his sleeve. <laughs> this one, he's like, really... let the games begin, God versus man, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> Have him as the Riddler. He works better as the Riddler. God, yeah, you know, really. It's like... da, 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 da. No! Yeah, really, like, get, make yeah. him as either the Joker or the Riddler, just not Lex Luthor. He's got too much hair. Way, way, way too much hair. And it's gonna be, and it's especially tough for me, because, like, it's gonna be, like, I, I can't, I still cannot see Jesse Eisenberg, like, other, other than Blue from Rio. <laughs> oh, James, did you say he has too much hair? Mm-hmm. Don't worry, I can shave it. <laughs> and then afterward, we can ask, where Why did so... the hair go? <laughs> Where did your hair go? Where did your hair go? Where did the slime go? Where did the slime um, go? <laughs> All right. I was reading the Wikipedia shitty, article. Shitty CGI and scrum ghosts. Okay, so there's a lot of cameos from the original cast in this, apparently, but they, uh, in an interview this month, actually, uh, Sigourney Weaver revealed that she had a offered to play a role to Paul Feig, on which he said, we'd love to have you in it, but after Weaver told him that she wanted to play Slimer, this is a joke? <laughs> Who? Who's the Green Weaver? Yeah. Eh? Okay. He, She's a he said he, he said he didn't think that would work out. It, it was from an actual interview, and she said she wanted to be Slimer originally. Before being turned down by Paul. A female Slimer. <laughs> that doesn't go there. I don't know. I just thought that was weird reading that. I was like, wait, what? I also remember reading Rick Moranis was offered a was offered to come down come down from Canada for a cameo. And uh, he he was so far the one who was I I guess you could say wisest to back out. Even though even though the world needs a little bit more Rick Moranis now. Yeah, really. He, he still does country albums and stand-up. He, he's mm -hmm. still alive. Yeah, right. he's still... He's still active. He's, like he's just not... Uh, he's just waiting for Spaceballs 2 to happen. Yeah. Um, I hope they do. I mean... With, uh... With, um... With this, he just said... You know, what? what's the point? I come... They're gonna fly me down there for a one-day cameo, and it's just a—it's just gonna be a couple hours. He said, "No, I'm—I'm I'm not interested." Rick's kind of got uh, standards, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh, so the other biggest thing with the trailer alone was that Leslie Jones, the black actress in the film, is. Just playing this, you know, black character. Just this. I I'm, I, I'm just for street. I'd just be like, I, I know this. I know New York City. I got street smarts. That kind of thing. I, I would say it's the the labeling of the character. I just, I just think she's not that funny. She. I, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make her this cool Ernie Hudson thing, but all I remember is her slapping Melissa McCarthy and. Quoting The Exorcist. That's the only See, thing. That's the only thing I get from her character. Like she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm all tough, and it's like the power of slime compels you. The power of pain compels you. That's, that's the probably... only. Thing, that's the only thing I'm taking away from Leslie Jones. I feel really bad. They could have gotten Queen Latifah, yeah. and she knows how to do it funny. Honestly, like, that's the Mr. closest Brady, thing. Queen Latifah. That's honestly well, the closest it's... thing in that trailer that's kind of funny. But that's it. It was. Well, if they got. Then... If they if got Queen Latifah, she wouldn't be able to do the Wiz live. 
So you want to meet the wizard? <laughs> yeah, she was she was good at that. Oh, yeah, I was just okay. like, but, but, everybody's complained about how yeah. it's like she's not a scientist. She's like, oh, she's just like a like an average black person, like average so black character. Was, but so was Ernie Hudson. He was the Green White and people, of Congo. And people are forgetting about that because it's just like, and then you know she actually Leslie Jones went on her Twitter actually like ranted about that with people it's like anybody can be a ghostbuster it doesn't have to be color or race or ethnicity or job or whatever it's just we could be all ghostbusters can't you go back to We're complaining about them being women gosh <laughs> uh it was just it's then, just yeah and, and, and to bring it full circle we just got a movie that is literally commenting about the issues on what's being attacked here on this movie and to be fair, what Ghostbuster, what this new Ghostbusters is trying to do is start a franchise. When really what it should have done was be more of a, it would really be more of an attack on like sexism, feminism, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what Disney did right, I think Sony is going to do wrong. And I know oh, these, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I know Zootopia and Ghostbusters, they're both two different mediums, they're both mm -hmm. two different things, but really think about that. You have a movie that's being attacked for everything. Everything that people are nitpicking about for. And you have a movie that's ironically commenting on what's being attacked on this summer blockbuster. So it's really weird. So basically the Ghostbusters movie is like the Donald Trump of this uh, this, yep. this uh, summer blockbusters. Yeah, and then Zootopia is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> You know, when you were talking about what Disney is doing right and what Sony is doing wrong, I thought you were just talking about animation in general. Oh, no. <laughs> now, if I was to do that, I would have to compare that to Pixar, but that's another story for another day. Um, I know I did. <laughs> l l I, l let, me, let me tell you, when I saw those comments for the Ghostbusters trailer, the first thing that came to mind was, Oh, dear, Sony just released the blue meanies on this one. Oh, yeah, and may I mention... May I mention, my god, was this a horrible week for Sony. This really was a horrible week for Sony. Not only did they release the trailer of Ghostbusters, which re received, like, massive, like, attacks that people are hating on it, but this is the same week that they also announced frickin' Surf's Up 2 with Godforsaken, re with Godforsaken wrestlers. John Cena, Triple H... John Some Cena, check I've never heard of. Page, Undertaker, and Mr. Mick Mahone. You know what the weird thing is? Um, there was an article I saw online that uh, on Ellen, an Ellen Jones uh, YouTube channel for the Ellen Show, she okay. released the Ghostbusters movie onto her YouTube channel, and that got a lot of negative press. The day before, Finding Dory got released, mm -hmm. and that feared better. And it's weird because the blogger was commenting how these were two different movies, but yet one was rehashing stuff from a previous movie in the trailer, and yet the other one was doing the same thing, but it got, but it got hit harder. And I think my argument there is that Sony is attempting to regenerate something that's been dead in the water for a long time. And you can see that there's stuff in there that they're recycling and reusing, Finding Nemo, they're recycling stuff? No, sorry, Finding Dory, they're recycling stuff? But it could lead to something interesting. The, instead of a dentist's office, it's an aquarium. Okay? Um, instead of going to find Nemo because he's being captured, they're trying to find Dory because her instincts kicked in and she goes to find her parents. Okay, that'd be kind of interesting. Um, instead of an aquarium tank gang led by William Defoe, you have a bunch of aquarium creatures being led by an octopus voiced by one of the fathers in Modern Family. Okay, that could be something. There's a funny gag where he tries to escape and he falls into the sink and he nearly turns the chopper on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just realized something. Maybe, uh, maybe that's what this, uh, this Ghostbusters needed was uh, Ellen DeGeneres as a Ghostbuster along with Jane Lynch. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's a step up from Melissa McCarthy. There was a lot of cast choices when it comes to casting. Like, it was originally 
They had Reb Rebel Wilson, Emma Stone. What? Um, I, I'm curious when, <laughs> on in what dimension is is Emma Stone actually considered a comedian? Well, it's not the point. Rebel is it the Wilson. point of being a comedian? Uh, hold on, let me read. Hold on. Mm. On December 10th... Wait, wait. On December 10th, comedian Rebel Wilson visited today where she was asked about a role in Ghostbusters in which she said, I have had a meeting and I would even do that without the money truck. i do that for free. Oh, God. There was even Tina Fey and Amy Poehler was rumored for casting. Oh, wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. I just remember who Rebel Wilson was. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Dude, she was not funny. She it's... was not funny. She was never funny to me to begin with. Amy Poehler would have oh, worked. Oh, look at me! I'm a big Australian woman. Oh, mm, I'm funny because I'm in Pitch Perfect, and I am different, and I don't care to have a mouth. Oh, mm, that's a good turkey leg. The only thing to beat me is a flying burrito. And a shitty ABC sitcom that only lasts seven episodes. <laughs> but yeah, you have Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy, and then you got two people from SNL, which is Kate McKinnon and Leslie Jones. Which, I give him props, Kate McKinnon is playing that engineer who does design all the equipment, which she looked, she kind of looks like Egon in a way, which nope. kind of... It's only... It, yeah, if they're and trying they're anything... Like goggles. She looks if, like a freaking cartoon! If they're, if they're trying to make her the Egon of this story, um, it, it definitely shows, but they're forgetting something. Uh, with the original Egon, it was all natural. They're trying to set up each female counterpart with a male counterpart. So, of course, Lizzie Jones plays the Ernie Hudson of the group, then, and then you got then, the other. Then, then why couldn't you just do it differently and give them different personalities? Because that would have been interesting to play off of. Like, don't set them up as Ghostbusters counterparts. Make new Ghostbusters characters. I would have been fine with that. Who am I supposed to see Kristen Wiig as? Bill Murray she looks more like the Dan Aykroyd character. All winsome and cuddly and innocent. Well, they all have different names, so maybe they have their own personalities. This is only our first impression of the trailer. They might have more to reveal in the trailer. They might, if we do get to see it, which I highly doubt any of us will go see it, it might change your minds about it. If I were to quote the Beatles, it's all too much. For me to see a love that's shining all around here. The more I am, the less I know. It is all too much. It is all too much. But, yeah. But with this... And it's all just, too much. It's all too much. Just a reminder it's that if this much. fails... If this fails, we still have the original Ghostbusters. So yeah. let's not... Let's just let's not get too crazy over it, because it's just like we're not losing something. We still have the originals. And, by the way, for everybody else out there, when I saw the trailer in a Subway restaurant, you know what I did? I looked out the window. It was nice. It was bright. It was sunny. Yeah, I had my little rage moment, but you know what? It looked nice outside. It, it just looked beautiful outside. There were blue skies. It looked clear. It was a good day, and I didn't want to let that move me. So, you know what? There's better things coming our way. We're going to get mm -hmm. the BFG from Steven Spielberg. We're going to get a lot of great Christmas movies. Hey, J.K. Rowling, she's doing a new Harry Potter spinoff. And it's going to look good. So, come on. Mm -hmm. Shut up, and look at what's coming in ahead of us. And then when I got out of Zootopia, I started flurrying. Trust me, go see Zootopia. Please. Well, if you Please. want. Please. Don't, don't see Whiskey Foxtrot Tango. 
a title like that is certainly more fucked up than it should be. Well, Someone's cheating on me. I'm going to go over to an Iraq country and try to make a difference in myself while my war's going on and become a news reporter and all sorts of things. Eh? Then why is it called... Space then. Then, why, why, <laughs> then why is it called Whiskey Foxtrot Tango? What kind of it's, name it's is that based, movie? It's, like it's calling, based on a book. It, it, it's like calling a trippy Wayne's World 3 Operation Wang Chung Peach Stops. It doesn't work. It's just, it's yeah. I've seen the press for that actually. It's apparently people saying it's Tina Fey's best performance in a film and uh, great journalism film, and it's based on a book. So don't. And, you know, Morgan and I were chatting last night. One of the things that I, I discussed, uh, uh, I discussed with him. You know, we. It, uh, you you had mentioned you know try try making a new movie try making new characters whatnot uh, doing your own thing and uh, I brought up actually you know what the the only film I think that uh, that has come since the original Ghostbusters that that has that same sort of vibe same sort of tone to it. Carol? No. I'm not saying it because I want to give it away. Oh, I know. Ghost Dad. No. Ghost Dad! <laughs> pick up the phone, bitch! Bitch, pick up the phone! Uh, just replace... Take out, take out the supernatural aspects and replace it with extraterrestrials. Reload and stitch? I'll give you a clue, they've made sunglasses cool again. Futurama? KJ? What is this ringing a bell? Men in Black. I don't know any gay Jays. Men in Black. Oh, Men in Black? Oh, I, I thought you were about to say Guardians of the Galaxy, actually. Oh. How? Oh. Agent K, Agent J, how does that You said K, J. No, I said K, the letter K, the, 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 the letter K, the letter K. I'm officially oh, yeah. primal now. <laughs> and... Well, and well uh, if, it's, if you're saying Men in Black, they, you know, they just announced they're still doing that crossover between 23 Jump Street. Yeah. Because? Yeah. Because, because they're looking they're they're looking to destroy everything that they've actually, I, actually I was okay with the first twenty one jump street, so I'm kind of okay with that, but at the same time I really hope it I really hope something works. That's all I'm saying, but at least it looks better than what we're gonna get with Ghostbusters. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, maybe think about it. We got Jonah Hill and uh, Channing Tatum, Chaining, and they're kind of Tatum. funny together. Seeing them fighting aliens disguised as teenagers, that could kind of work. And it has some potential. I'm not mm -hmm, saying it, it does. Fun, you know? It does have potential. I mean, we don't have a lot of crossover films, for fuck's sake. On the bright side, what other Ghostbusters movies we should have? I know James brought up Evolution. Last time we were talking about it, you said, you said, we need another one. Oh yeah, Evolution. It was billed as go the Ghostbusters of the New Millennium. That was the actual tagline for it, but even it, even it couldn't be the Ghostbusters for the New Millennium. And the only claim to fame that movie had was a bunch of head and shoulder shampoo being shot up an alien's ass. Mm-hmm. Yes. I am not kidding. This is the end of the movie. It's a giant amoeba alien and this giant butthole, and they just shoot like a fire hose of shampoo up its ass. Cause that—that's what stops it. It's head and shoulder shampoo. Why can I only hear Gilbert Gottfried's voice when you say that? Because, because.
there's a certain kind of chemical in there that makes the alien destroy because if you light it on fire, it will explode and expand just like my penis over a fire. Yeah! Talk about a roasted weenie, baby, Herman. <laughs> and then I just shot a pe- I just went and shoot some shampoo over an alien's asshole. <laughs> He just saved the world. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we're just... I'm so glad you're capturing this in video. <laughs> that's, gonna be, that's gonna be my new thing. <laughs> Originally, it was you bringing your back scratcher, now I'm gonna have my new replay moment. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yay. Uh, okay. I am funny again. <laughs> you were always funny. When did you stop? When didn't he? What is that? Ah, uh, so. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Ah, uh, so. What are. People who are watching, what are your thoughts about the trailer? Comment below. Let's talk about this in the comments. I don't. You don't go. You guys don't even talk with me anymore. You don't comment on my videos. Fuck you guys. I'm just kidding. Um, Keep it civil, people. Don't kill us. Spare us. Don't spear us. I'm only ten subscribers away from 500 people. I need ten of you to subscribe to me. <laughs> ten of you people. That's all I need. Give me 500 subscribers. Do it. Please. And we will do something Please, funny. We will. I'm trying to plan to leave for 500 subscribers, and these guys could be involved as well. Please subscribe to my channel. I will try to post more videos, especially with Cinema Royale related. I'm trying to do some other stuff, but you guys be surprised about that. So, thanks for watching this uh, impromptu little discussion about the Ghostbusters trailer. Thank you for watching, and good night. Peace. Shut See you later, down. dudes. Na -na 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 it's gonna suck.